Good evening, folks. This is Andy Pedraza with Special Effects Academy, and we're on the start of the week session in the Forex Trading Room for September 22nd of 2019. We'll go through our regular agenda, I'll look at uh, the results for the prior week, our currency strength meter, past seven days and past 30 fundamental announcements coming up this week, a look at the major pairs on the daily charts, <clears throat> sorry, any setups we see in progress for the week to come, and a few words in conclusion. Starting at the top with on my account, a noted improvement. We did get taken out of two trades, uh, pound Swiss and pound JPY, as we had a bit of a retracement midweek on the pound pairs. We got taken out at a very nice level of profit, and we did jump right back into the same two pairs. So we have those same two trades open once again. Our current uh, uptick is 4.76% on realized gains. The intermediate term account also did quite well. I think we were at 54% realized gains last week. Uh, we did close out a few more trades in our favor, notably the, uh, the pound trades. As I said, the pound did retrace midweek before continuing in the same direction. So we did get taken out of profit and uh, we re-entered uh, the, uh, the pound trades here as well. And we also have some much older trades that are for the most doing well, especially the Euro pound. Our oldest open trade from the beginning of the month is uh, carrying, I think, about 300 pips, give or take, uh, last time I checked. So definitely uh, doing well. We've got 60% realized gains on this account in the last six months. We're about to close our six months of the up in the year. And uh, open profit, we've got about another 8%. So we're actually very close to 70% right now. And last but not least, the short-term account had an other uptick, and I mentioned this in a later chart, but we did have, um, this is the only account that's actually had a drawdown throughout the, uh, the year. We were down about maybe 8% at one point. We're now nicely uh, above 10%, uh, if I'm not mistaken, or very close to 10% again. So we recovered from the drawdown and we've gone back to recover gains on this account. We had to do a little bit of tweaking. Um, looks like what we were doing on short-term trading wasn't delivering the best results. So a couple of uh, weeks back, uh, maybe three weeks back, I did sit down and uh, do a bit of baselining on this account and modified our approach. And well, the results are showing. And this is going to be something that you need to take into account when trading. Uh, there, there is no one right way. There is no set and forget system that you're just going to be able to dive in, uh, put it in place, and uh, it's always going to be producing profits. You're going to need to be tweaking it along the way. The markets do change. So what works today isn't necessarily going to work tomorrow. That's why you need to know uh, not just what you're doing right now, but be open to, uh, to other possibilities and, of course, make adjustments along the way. But regardless, um, the short-term ledger, the short-term account is, uh, is back in profit, and we have been running some, um, some nice uh, weekly profits since I tweaked the account, and this is another one. So we did do 3.85% uh, this week. Uh, we only had one losing trade. Not that that means a lot. Uh, we could end up having half the trades be losers and still make money, but um, it, it was a good week. So we had some nice trends that we caught on to. In particular, three of the trades provided most of the profit. And you'll note that we weren't really trading the pound on this account since the pound was a bit bouncy. Uh, so most of our profits came out of the uh, Australian uh, pairs and uh, and a little bit out of the um, out of the USD Swiss on Friday. Our one loser was precisely the euro pound. Uh, we got in uh, late in the week, expecting it to uh, move in our favor on Friday. It didn't, and we got out uh, reasonably flat. Uh, we dropped 12 pips on that trade, so not the biggest, um, not the biggest mover in either direction. But anyway, another positive week on the short-term ledger. Notes and opportunities for improvement. Another good week across the board. So you know, pat on the back for everybody. This, that, and the other. 
It was a very busy announcements week. We had um, lots of uh, interest rate decisions and uh, policy statements and whatnot coming out, <clears throat> which of course benefited our uh, short-term trading more than anything else, since we did manage to pick a few pips uh, here and there along the way. In particular, the, uh, the Australian profits that we picked up were as a result of the movement after the Australian fundamentals. So short-term trading is always going to benefit if you catch it in the right direction direction out of the uh, announcement cycle. Uh, the trend is definitely being our friend. So we are writing several trends right now, notably the, uh, the pound trend as it retraces back into pound strength. So we'll continue doing that for as long as that trend lasts. And as I mentioned earlier, tweaking the short-term account does seem to have brought it back in line with, uh, with expectations. Obviously, everything in trading is a work in progress. So this doesn't mean that, okay, now we're good and, um, and just leave it be. No, this will be an ongoing, um, an ongoing review of what's going on and make sure we're heading in the, uh, in the right direction. But just keep that in mind in, in the back of your heads that uh, th this will always be necessary. You, you know that I don't try to put myself forward as the guy that never loses a trade or whose accounts are always, it's all two steps back, uh, two steps forward, one step back. And, um, and the way you adjust to the, uh, to the changing market is what's gonna make you a successful trader. Th this isn't about being right. Uh, it's about making a buck. I, I don't need to be right. I just need to make money at the end of the day. Relative strength meter for the past seven and 30 days. So past 30 days, uh, we've got a little bit of a drop in volatility. Plus we're seeing more color in the charts. If you recall the last few monthly reviews, we've been seeing that the uh, really big movers have been silver and gold. Um, that is now finally starting to change and we're starting to see more color uh, in the charts of some of the other um, um, instruments. Uh, start moving as well. Silver continued to be the big gainer uh, for the uh, last 30 days and gold slid back a little bit. Uh, it did lose ground against a few of the currencies and of course against silver, but the metals are still doing quite well compared to where they were, I don't know, a year ago. On the currency side for the monthly, we can see that the pound has been the big winner. Uh, the Kiwi and the yen have been the big losers. Uh, Australian, well, Canadian, I would say, has been a winner as well, but you don't see those deep colors on the Canadian. So while it has uh, moved up on the monthly, it hasn't moved up all that much. So you don't see a lot of heavy coloring except in the Kiwi, the Yen, and of course, the Pound. Uh, moving on to the uh, last seven days, silver and gold had a very good week. Uh, the dollar had a very good week as well. The key, we had a disastrous week and we capitalized on that. We are trading the Kiwi dollar down on the intermediate term account and carrying quite a nice chunk of profit right now. Uh, the pound had a good week uh, despite retracing uh, midweek, but it still managed to, uh, to gain against pretty much everybody except for the U.S. dollar. Uh, the Australian had a bad week on the back of its fundamental, and we pretty much capitalized on that as well. And the euro seems to be backsliding, going into weakness again, which also helps a couple of our open trades, notably euro dollar, euro Swiss. Uh, euro pound, we're actually trading in the, uh, no, we're trading in the same direction. So the euro pound has also benefited from that euro weakness. So all in all, uh, we seem to be riding the right trends, of course, uh, that doesn't mean, as I said, that we can go to sleep, um, but it does uh, make for a much uh, easier trading experience until the trends do change. Fundamental announcement scheduled for this week. Um, not a busy week, thank God. Last week almost killed me. We had uh, like four announcements that were at four in the morning to seven in the morning. That's mostly when I sleep. So I wasn't too thrilled, but hey, you got to trade these announcements uh, as they're the ones that make the, uh, the short-term money. Um, so that's never going to change, but I, I don't, um, I'm, I'm not sorry the week ended and thankfully this one is a much lighter week. So we've got uh, the Bank of Japan's governor, uh, Kuroda-san, he's got a speech at 1.35 a.m. Tuesday morning. 
and the Bank of Japan monetary policy meeting minutes is going to come out at 7.50 p.m. that same day. I'm not going to be trading those live, though I may change my mind as regards to monetary policy meeting minutes. Um, the speech probably isn't going to do much, so that one's a no-brainer to pass it. Um, and, uh, you know, just, just wait to read about it the next day. Uh, the monetary policy meeting minutes, we may indeed trade that one lie, but we will have an 8 p.m. session anyway, and that's probably going to be good enough. I may open the trading room a little bit earlier to see if we can capitalize on anything on Tuesday. So I'll, um, I'll advise on that via email uh, when we get closer to that day. Um, but what we will be trading will be the uh, Reserve Bank of New Zealand's interest rate decision coming out Tuesday at 10 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. So that one will definitely be traded. And then the rest of the week, we've got a GDP coming out of the uh, U.S. and uh, durable goods orders as well out of the U.S. Thursday and Friday. I normally don't trade these, and this is no exception. So... Uh, I'll, I'll pass on them. 8.30 a.m. I'm definitely sleeping most of the time. So there's that. Um, moving on to the chart, starting with oil. Of course, we all know what happened you know, last weekend in Saudi Arabia. Two of their main uh, facilities, oil processing plants, did get attacked by drone strikes, apparently from Iran, maybe from Yemen. Nobody seems to really know. But about 5% of uh, the world's uh, oil producing capacity was impacted by those two facilities being put out of action. So oil spiked as a result. It got as high as uh, 64 before going back down to the high 50s, still significantly above the uh, prior trading range. So oil is on a bit of a bullish spike. Uh, that's not been helping the Canadian. The Canadian has been very... Uh, decoupled from oil for most of this year. Normally, when oil goes up, so does the Canadian dollar. When oil goes down, the Canadian dollar goes down. That has not been going out this year, mainly because I think, uh, or at least as I understand it, Canada did scale back on its oil production earlier in the year or maybe late last year. So they seem to not be as reliant on oil as they were before for whatever that's worth. That might be temporary, might be long-term, but that seems to be the favored explanation from all the, uh, all the talking heads on CNBC and Bloomberg and this, that, and the other. So I don't know what to make of it. All I know is uh, we're pragmatists. We don't really care about reason so much as about the impact on what's going on. And the impact is that oil is not moving the Canadian as much as it used to. But I actually trade oil separately from Forex uh, when I'm trading options. So I always keep tabs on oil. And right now we are only bullish on oil. It wouldn't surprise me if oil peaked and uh, crossed the high of this chart, the uh, 66, uh, whatever there at the top. So we'll see what goes on. But for now, I'll just keep tabs on it. And now moving on to the currencies, euro dollar continues to slide down. It is following the top of that downwards channel emphasis on top. It has not been um, significant or it has not stayed inside the channel for, for quite a while. Uh, it has been uh, traveling towards the top of the channel, still heading down, but traveling at a, high, at a slightly higher point. So still bearish. We do have an open trade uh, shorting the euro dollar on the intermediate term account. It is at profit, and we're still waiting for it to drop significantly further and give us some nice profit there. But for now, this is still a very bearish chart, even though we do have to be a little bit cautious the dollar is bouncy as well. Euro is weakening, but the dollar is not out of the woods. So always keep an eye on, on these uh, dollar crosses because they may turn at the drop of a hat. Pound dollar, the pound continues to strengthen. We can see that it did do a retrace on Friday. Not too sure if that's just a normal Friday retrace or something else is going on. I guess the market open will tell us today into tomorrow. Uh, but this is still a bullish chart. It has crossed the Ichimoku cloud. It's crossed several levels of resistance along the way. And based on the fundamentals, and by that I mean the, um, the uh, hope that suddenly crept into the UK that Brexit might be either 
delayed for a really long time. We're talking more than a year out into December of 2020, or perhaps even uh, canceled altogether, has put wind back into the pound sale. So all the pound pairs you will see are trending into pound strength. We are riding these trends on the intermediate and the long-term account. So we're picking up as much money on its way up as we did pick up on the way down. That's what we do. And uh, well, we're doing pretty good at it. So we'll continue looking for opportunities to trade the pound pairs up where we aren't already, or perhaps even add to those positions. Pound dollar is probably one of those that I'll be a little bit more cautious again, because I don't fully trust the dollar. It can get stronger, it can get weaker, and it's not really telegraphing its moves. Um, even on announcements where you would think that uh, the dollar would move in one direction or the other, it's been a little bit contrarian. So take that with a grain of salt. USD JPY in general moving into yen weakness dollar strength, but it did do a bit of a retrace on Thursday, Friday, and uh, it did take us out of a, uh, of a long position we had on the intermediate term account. It took us out sometime on Friday. I never reported it in email because I noticed after market close, but it did hit its trailing stop and took us out at a very small level of profit. We'll see this week if we want to jump back in. Um, but suffice to say, we made a little, tiny bit of profit and, uh, and got taken out on Friday. It has been updated in the ledger, though. So if you go look at the ledgers, everything is up to date through right now. USD Canadian, um, bullish, definitely. I mean, it has broken through resistance. It's broken above the Ichimoku cloud, but, but it's very hesitant. So... The cat is weakening, the dollar is getting stronger, but it's neither at its most recent high, around the 133.70, which happened uh, sometime in August, nor is it at its very bottom, which, uh, or its most recent bottom, I should say, which happened at the beginning of this month. So it's sideways as far as I'm concerned. It's following the upper contours of the Ichimoku cloud and um, not trading it right now. We did trade it, I think we put in a short-term trade on this one or another cat pair on the uh, short-term account and, and made profit with it. But I'm not looking right now for any long-term trends or any long-term trades, I should say, with the current sideways pattern. USD Swiss hit a level of resistance this week at the uh, 99.80 something, bounced neatly off of it and it is heading down. We took some profit on the short-term account on Thursday into Friday, capturing some of that move, not all of it, but some of it. Still a very bullish chart. So this thing is still heading towards the top. Uh, and until it does break the lower level of support, it's still in an uptrend and it's just retracing. Aussie dollar, most of that movement was a result of the uh, Australian employment numbers. Uh, the uh, Australian dollar did weaken and the dollar also gained strength. So that helped this one go down. Uh, we did, uh, no, we didn't trade this one, did we? We had, uh, we had more on the Aussie dollar, but I think that's the one Aussie one that didn't get triggered. Um, we probably would have made some money on it, but it just never hit our... Uh, entry by the time I decided it was too late in the week. We did make profit on Aussie CAD and Aussie JPY, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, but this one is moving back down. It did find resistance at the uh, 68, uh, 69, uh, that red line it bounced off of, which is also very close to the top of the Ichimoku cloud. Did a complete cloud cross and is now hitting the, uh, the top of that uh, descending trend line. So this is another one we'll have to see this week, which way it goes as the market opens and see if there's any opportunities here for us. Kiwi dollar couldn't be more bullish. It did uh, give us a new low on Friday and uh, on more profit for us. We have been trading the Kiwi dollar down on the intermediate term account for a while now. And not our oldest trade, but certainly not our newest. I think last time I checked, we were 150 pips in profit somewhere around that neighborhood, which is quite impressive because it hasn't been that long. Um, so new low, obviously we'll have to wait and see what the uh, open of the week brings us, but it is looking very promising in that it's broken through all of the uh, prior levels of support. Uh, so we'll see how far it goes. 
Aussie Canadian, this was another one that benefited or benefited us, I should say, from the, uh, from the Australian employment numbers announcement. And we did make quite a nice uh, bit of profit on the short-term account trading this one back down. If it does break the lowest level of support, I will start considering longer-term trades. For now, I'll continue trading it in the short term. Euro Swiss, uh, also uh, an open trade, I think. I don't know. I forget if this one got closed out or not, but we were trading this one and trying to trade it down. Um, indeed, it is moving down. It finally found uh, resistance at the top of the Ichimoku cloud and is heading back down. Yeah, I think we still have an open trade on this one. Yes, yes, we do. Uh, this was the open trade that was negative for quite a while and is now once again at profit thanks to Thursday and Friday's movement. So we were as much as I think uh, 70, 75 pips negative. Now we're carrying a very small profit of about 20 or so pips, but still moving in the right direction. So this trade has come back to us. Uh, still a nicely bearish chart. It uh, found uh, definitely trying to break out of that channel. Uh, it popped back in momentarily this week and is now popping back out. So we're looking for it to go to the prior low and perhaps even deeper as it completely breaks out of the channel after doing a test. Euro pound, uh, what can we say? 300 pips and counting, I think, on our euro pound trade. It's been nothing but drop. And I don't see it stopping that drop anytime soon. Uh, very, very small retraces when it does retrace and we're trailing it at a far enough distance not to be worried about being taken out early. Uh, we're protecting a nice chunk of profit nonetheless, so we'll just keep riding this one and see how far down it can drop. <clears throat> Everything on this chart from the candles to the uh, res uh, support levels broken to the Ichimoku indicators, to the MACD, the uh, Williams R, everything is telling you to sell, sell, sell. Uh, we did sell quite a while back and no change to that. Um, based on, and, and I try not to do this a whole lot because it just adds risk, but if this continues too much further, we're gonna start adding more to that position and doubling up, uh, seeing how far we can get away with it if we, um, if we add more money to the trade, but I'll, I'll, I'll consider that this week. And of course, I will uh, communicate that very clearly if and when I do. And, um, and as always ask for people's feedback and, and whatnot. But uh, sometimes when, when you latch onto a trend like this one and it's only halfway to the bottom, that's when you should start adding to your position. Euro JPY did a turnaround finally this week, uh, broke through uh, support. It bounced off the bottom of the Ichimoku cloud. And depending on what it does right now at the beginning of the week, I may start putting some money on this one, trying to trade it back down to the prior low. I think there was about 600 pips there. Now, actually, there's about 300 pips there, but still a decent amount to be made if we do have a revisiting of the bottom. So this is uh, one of those that's top on my radar for the beginning of the week. Euro Canadian still in a sideways pattern and still not uh, decisively breaking through support. Uh, I'm bearish on it uh, simply because the euro is dropping, but the uh, the Canadian could uh, could uh, do us a favor and, and get stronger. It, it really hasn't. So it seems to be finding significant support at the level it's at, at around the 145.75. And until I see it break through that and stay below it, it's probably going to be one of those I monitor and uh, not so much try to trade. Pound JPY is, uh, is heading up as with most of the pound pairs, we did have a, a bit of a retrace on Friday, uh, which could have been simply the, uh, the weekly, re uh, the Friday retrace. It is above support, however, so it never broke any of the prior levels. And of course, we're waiting on the, on the market kickoff this week, the first 24 hours to give us some indication of whether this trend is going to continue for the week or if it's going to take a breather or even do a little bit of a further retracement. Either way, we'll be, um, we'll be on top of it. Aussie JPY, um, we made profit on this one as well on the short-term account, but suffice to say that the fundamental, the employment 
and I made it uh, do a U-turn. It uh, has broken back into the cloud. In fact, it's about to break out of the bottom of the cloud. We did close out those trades because, again, it was a short-term account. But if, uh, if it stays below that level of support, we are going to start putting some money onto this pair on either the intermediate or the long term. So we'll decide uh, later on this week. Euro New Zealand, this is one of those that we missed. I mean, we were trading, not, not to say we missed in, in the sense that we didn't make money. We've been making money off the Euro New Zealand since back in, uh, I forget when, probably back in March when it broke the trend line. So we've been consistently making money in both directions. But this latest move, we, we traded it. We got taken out flat on a retrace. And then we never jumped back in. And it finally broke out of the top. Um, by the time I noticed what it was doing, it was just a little bit too late to jump on that bandwagon. I don't like to chase the market. I like the market to come to me. And, uh, and in this case, we simply missed it. But uh, also a lesson for... For all traders out there, you're never going to catch every single valid trade. You're going to have false negatives, which is where you miss out on a trade that did move in your direction. And you're going to have false positives where you get into a trade and you get stopped out at a loss. So that's unavoidable. You're never going to catch them all. You're never going to catch the bottoms, never going to catch the tops. Uh, it's enough that you make enough money. So don't be greedy. Don't try to catch them all. Uh, trust me, I once tried to do that and, and it just doesn't end well. So You've got to be realistic and realize your limitations. You're not going to catch every single movement that happens out there. In this case, we missed this one, and I'll be looking for opportunities to jump in. If it does stay above support, we're going to try to ride that thing up as far as it goes. Uh, but more likely, I think it is a little bit overextended. It will probably drop back down to a test of the um, lower levels of support, either the horizontals or the top or bottom of the Ichimoku cloud. So we'll be on the lookout for those opportunities regardless. Pound Canadian is one of the slower moving uh, pound pairs in that uh, the, the CAD and the pound were both gaining strength until recently when the CAD gave it up. So in the last 10 days, the CAD gave up the fight and this thing started heading up. Uh, we did jump in. We, uh, we did make some uh, profit there until, again, Friday. That retrace did uh, put us into a slight negative. And, of course, we're waiting to see what direction the market takes as the new week opens. Um, but we do have an open trade on the intermediate term account uh, trading the pound Canadian up. And, again, it's, it's negative but not uh, dreadfully so. It's one of the newer trades, and I think the negative we're carrying is basically Friday's uh, retracement. So we'll see how that, uh, how that starts painting for the week. And last but not least, the pound Swiss, also a very bullish uh, pound pair. We have taken profit multiple times on the pound Swiss, and most recently this week, we took chunks of profit, big chunks of profit in the long term and the intermediate term account, and we jumped back in. They're also carrying the newest trades are carrying a slight negative based on Friday's retracement, but as we can see, this thing is, uh, is definitely heading back towards the top until something makes it change direction. Uh, there's been no trend line broken uh, so far. This is still heading up, and uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> Again, we'll see what the um, what the opening of the week brings us, and that's the end. <clears throat> that's the end of our charts for uh, this review. Setups we see in progress. Obviously, the uh, the pound pairs, the pound continues rising on the back of that ever increasing chance that Brexit might not even happen. So we'll continue riding that trend for as long as it lasts. The Swiss is still bouncy. Um, it's starting to look like good short-term trading opportunities. Uh, and by that, I mean for the short-term account. I don't mean to short the, uh, the Swiss. We'll trade it in whichever direction it's going. But I think right now I would stay away from long-term trades and try to capitalize on those intra-week movements on the short-term account. The Canadian, of course, returning uh, in general to weakness, but it still bears watching. I, I don't think the Canadian can get much weaker than it's already getting. Uh, so at some point it will stop, not necessarily turn around. But a, as you can tell from my review, I'm being a lot more cautious with, uh, with the Canadian pairs uh, and indeed with dollar pairs as well than I am with a lot of the other currencies. 
The yen is still struggling to pick a direction. It, um, it has um, gained a lot of strength. And then from, I'm going to say about three weeks back, uh, it has been giving some of that up. Um, not on all currency crosses. Um, so it, it does bear watching. I'm still waiting for the yen to kick into a really long-term trend, which it hasn't for a while. So uh, right now it's still in that struggle trying to find a direction. Uh, we do have that uh, monetary policy statement coming out later this week. So that will bear watching. And again, while I don't really plan on trading it live, I, I probably will only because it does happen around the time of one of our one of our sessions. So I'm going to be paying attention to it anyway. And the last but not least, the, uh, the Euro pairs, uh, the Euro is definitely weakening. So there's no denying that. Um, not across all currency crosses. If you look at Euro New Zealand, it's the Kiwi that's weakening more than the Euro, but that doesn't mean the Euro isn't weakening. It just means that the Kiwi is weakening even faster. Uh, so in general, the Euro pairs seem to be headed uh, into Euro weakness. And that indeed may be uh, as long running a trend as the uh, as the pound is proving to be. So we'll be uh, we'll be looking at those options there. I'm always on the lookout for the beginning of long running trends because that is what the long term account will thrive on. And we haven't traded that account a whole lot this year, simply because until recently we hadn't had any of those long running trends start to establish themselves. That looks to be changing, so we'll keep an eye on the euro as well. So that's going to be it for me this week. Um, some parting words, and you know, I, I this isn't necessarily a reaction to anything. It's just every now and then I do a review, not just of the market, but of my life in general and what's been happening and this, that, and the other. And what I came up with uh, this weekend is that you definitely have to have focus. And uh, I've spoken about this before. I think I wrote one of the chapters in my detail um, on this subject, but you do have to learn to tune out the rest of the world. Mediocrity loves company. I know the saying is misery loves company, but it's pretty much the same thing. As you start making money trading, and I saw this happen in real life to me as I started making more and more money trading instead of making money um, at, in a job, I, I started to find resistance where I least expected it, and that was friends and family. So you guys, as you start getting better at this and, and start making more money at trading, you have to be aware of it and you have to be ready for it. The reality is that most people are going to start feeling threatened if they see you start to leave them behind. If suddenly you're not scrambling trying to make ends meet every month and where am I going to pay my bills from, but you seem to have extra money, People are going to start to look at you. I don't know if it's jealousy, if it's resentment. Um, specifically, and I know I told this story before, but a few years back, I, um, I took the opportunity of a, uh, of a friend's business trip. I said, well, you know, after you finish your, uh, your, your business and all that, let's meet, uh, I don't know, in, in Orlando and uh, spend a few days catching up and, uh, and seeing how much of uh, Florida's liquor we can drink. And that's what we did. Um, and, and well, you guys don't know me because most of you haven't actually spent a lot of physical time with me. But I, during the week, uh, I pretty much am glued to my phone. I'm, I'm doing other stuff uh, everywhere, but I am checking the news cycle every hour or so. I take a quick peek on MetaTrader and see if, uh, if things are going okay, if I need to tweak anything. And, and let me tell you, that's maybe two minutes of my time every hour, but uh, the phone is in my hand. And on one of those, uh, my friend uh, in, in Florida there asked me, didn't you take this week off as vacation? Why are you checking your phone so often? And I said, no, I'm, I'm not checking anything regarding work. I was still working at the time. I said, I'm checking the market to see how my trades are doing. What do you mean your trade? So I explained, well, you know, I trade the Forex market with this, that, and the other. Oh, that's a scam. And I said, dude, you know, look, here are my accounts. This is real money. It ties into my TD Ameritrade account, which is what I've been paying for everything on, on that debit card because TD Ameritrade gives you a debit card off of your uh, Forex account. Uh, th this whole vacation I'm, I'm paying for from the Forex profits I, I'm making right now. Uh, no, no, that's a scam. Okay. So I, I didn't bother even arguing it. I, I used to argue that and then try to show people my accounts and my history. But you know what? You got to stop sharing except with the right people. 
Um, you can't upgrade your family, unfortunately. You're stuck with whoever life gave you as family, or sometimes you're blessed with them, I don't know. Uh, but you can and should upgrade friends and acquaintances regularly. If not, they're going to try to drag you back. Um, I also use the analogy of the uh, crabs in a bucket quite often. If you, if you ever go fishing and, and you're catching crabs, if you have one crab in a bucket, it will escape. They're escape artists. But if you put two or more crabs in a bucket, then every time one of the crabs is about to climb out, one of the other crabs will grab him and pull him back into the bucket. So you can leave the bucket uncovered. And so long as there are two or more crabs inside, none of them will ever escape. That's what people are like. Sir. They want to put down and make sure you stay at their level. I've never quite explained it to myself as to why this is, but... Trust me, it is. So um, moral of the story is that time is the one thing you can't make more of. So be very miserly with it. Be, be very careful who you give your time to because um, you don't want to waste your time. And that's going to be it for me this week, guys. Uh, thank you for joining us. And does anybody have any comments or questions before we drop off? No, let's just have a great week. Yeah. Amen. Thank you for that. All righty, guys, then I shall talk to you tomorrow. You guys all have a great rest of the weekend.